Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be going over the spindle that I designed for Ratchet. So before I go over and I have to start working down on the ground, let me take advantage of this workbench and I'm going to install the Forerunner front four-wheel drive hub onto the spindle here. One thing that's nice about getting these uh, laser cut is they basically fall right on there. Usually when I make these by hand I have to make some repairs to those. Okay, now we've got the hub mounted in there. Now let's go assemble this on the wheel. Alright, so I've got the wheel here, and I've got my spindle, and now I've also got the rotor hat. So I need to put the rotor hat on the spindle, and then I need to take the spindle and put it in place there, and then get a, get a couple of lug nuts on. However, at this point in the game, it gets pretty heavy. So when I design something like this, the first thing that I do is I look at my fixed points because they're going to define what I have to work around. And my first fixed point is going to be the, the yoke coming off of the transaxle and then the next fixed point is going to be the yoke coming off of the uh, spindle. These are going to be fixed points, meaning there's really nothing that I can do with them. They are what they are and they are where they are, so I have to design the suspension around them. And then my next fixed point is the chassis right here. This tube is where it is. There's nothing I can do about that. It's not going to change. So I need to set up where the lower control arm comes into contact with that so that it works with the uh, pivot point of the drive shaft and the spindle. Now the spindle on the other hand I have a little bit more leeway. Although this is a fixed point I can move these points around a little bit to a certain extent. I'm trying to keep it inside the wheel but in certain situations if you have to you can come outside the wheel. You'll see some spindles where the upper point here actually comes up and outside the wheel if the person feels that they need a little bit more height in the design and then if they did that their connection point up here might be a little bit inboard to allow for that difference in the wheel. But I like to keep all of my points in the same plane if, if possible and buried inside the wheel as far as possible. So the first thing that I had to do is with the design of the spindle and the room that I had in here, I had to decide how low my lower control arm was going to connect in relation to the um, center line of the drive shaft here. With all the measurements that I came up with, four inches, so from the center line here down four inches to the center line of the lower control arm. Four inches seemed like a good distance that still allowed me to be 10 inches wide for the lower control arm which seemed to give it plenty of strength. So I needed to design the lower connection point of the lower control arm four inches below the center line of the drive shaft here. Which I did. This right now is mocked up so that it is exactly four inches. The center line of this bolt is exactly four inches below the center line of this drive shaft. And then if we come over here, four inches from the center line of this drive shaft, or yoke, whatever you want to call it, to the center line of this bolt is four inches. So the lower control arm will be running across here and it will be completely parallel with the drive shaft. Then the next thing that I need to do is I need to get the lower control arm the exact same length as the uh, drive shaft. So going from the center of the drive shaft here to the center of the drive shaft here, I need to match that distance for the lower control arm. Now in a perfect world, we would be able to connect the lower control arm right in a, a vertical line with the pivot point of the drive shaft. But because of the size of the bushings I'm using here and the fact that the chassis is where it is, I can't do that. I can't get that close because I'd be running into the chassis right there. So what I did is I put this out just as far as it needs to be so that there's clearance for the bush between the bushing and the chassis. I leave myself over enough room because I know I'm going to wrap some eighth inch metal around there 
and then you want a little bit of a gap so that rocks and debris can fall out of there. So I gave myself three eighths of an inch because that gives me an eighth for metal and then a quarter inch for debris to fall through. So now the pivot point of this lower bushing and the pivot point of the drive shaft are not in the same plane, the same plane. The bushing is actually out a little bit farther and it's out 11 sixteenths of an inch further out this way. So center line comes down, you go out 11 sixteenths and then you're at the center line of the lower control arm. So what that means is when you come over to your spindle here, you need to match that offset. However, you have to match it in the same direction. So I don't want to come 11 sixteenths out this way. I need to go 11 sixteenths in this way. Now in some situations, depending on what your drive shaft situation is, that may or may not be possible. However, in this situation it was. The spindle had enough room that I was able to push that connection point in a little bit farther. So the connection point down here is already four inches down from the center line of the drive shaft pivot point, but it also is 11 sixteenths farther inward than the pivot point of the drive shaft. That makes it so that the drive shaft and the lower control arm are going to be the exact same length. Now just to keep things simple, I did the same thing with the upper pivot point here. It also comes in 11 sixteenths of an inch from here. And then when I do build this structure up here, I'll make sure that that pivot point is in center with this pivot point and that the distance from the lower pivot point to the upper pivot point will be the exact same distance from here to the upper point here. And that will make all the geometry correct so that as this spindle or the wheel travels up and down through its suspension, the distance of the drive shaft will stay essentially exactly the same. And although I'll have a spline in the, in the drive shaft, if everything goes properly, when the suspension travels, that spline won't do anything. It'll just be there for, you know, for emergencies or if there's minor, minor, minor movements. But if it's set up that way, when the suspension goes through its travel, it'll never be pushing or pulling on this yoke because those drive shafts through those slip yokes, when they're under pressure, they actually push or pull very, very hard on these yokes and that causes problems to the bearings and the differentials inside these transaxles. So when you're setting up a drive shaft like this with suspension like this, you, you want to set it up so that there's no plunge effect of your drive shaft. Now you guys know that when I design a lot of this stuff, I first design it in 2D CAD in my Bentec software. And I did that for this spindle. So if you guys go into the description of this video, there's a link there for my shared folder. If you go into the shared folder and if you go to the ratchet file, click on there and then go to the rear suspension. In there, there'll be some spindle files and what will be in there will be uh, the two-dimensional BTEX files for the spindle, which is specific for the Bentex software. There's also DXF files, which you can use to send the parts to any laser cutting or plasma cutting place. They can use that to burn it out. There will also be bitmap files in there that if you want to cut them out by hand, you can just print those out. You'll have to figure out how to print that to scale, but there will be dimensions on the drawings, so you can use that to find out if you're getting it to the correct size or not, but if you print those out or just use the dimensions, you could uh, just cut these out yourself. Now, what I did differently this time is, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting metal at my local scrap yard because with all the lockdown stuff, they're not letting me wander the scrap yard like I usually do. That's usually where I get most of my metal for making stuff like this. So I figured it was a good time to experiment with these places that will laser cut. Now I don't have any skin in the game with this company, but I'll put a link in the description to the place where I had cut these out. But what I did is I just took the DXF files that I made for the spindle and basically you just send them to this company and you select the metal that you want and uh, you pay the money and about a week later the parts show up on your door, which was pretty cool because the parts are really, really nice. Um, I made these out of 10 gauge cold rolled steel. So they're about 0.135 uh, thousandths of an inch thick, which might be a little bit thin for this. I'm not 100% sure. Um, 
I had a feeling that these might be more of a test than the final product, so I didn't want to go really, really thick or anything like that. But I made them out of 10 gauge, which these would probably work just fine. I mean, they're pretty solid, but if you were really getting crazy, you might have wanted something a little bit thicker. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, these right here are actually a little bit wrong. They won't be for you because I've realized what I did wrong on these and I have already made the corrections to the files. So this won't be too much of a problem with you, but let me give you guys a brief description of what I did here. I originally was designing the lower suspension so that it was using Himes for the upper rod and the lower H-arm. Remember, this is going to be H-arm rear suspension. I was going to do Himes because that's what I did on Mauler, and that has worked out just fine. But remember, I'm trying to make Ratchet so that he can take a little bit more of a beating than Mauler did. So once I designed that, I started thinking, you know, these, these Himes, this area right here is the weakness when you're putting force on Himes this way. That thin little portion right there, albeit very strong, that's your weak point. And so after I designed it, I thought, you know what, I don't want Himes on the bottom there. I want uniballs because uniballs are much stronger at taking a load this way because my control arm will be welded up to these uniballs like that and it's gonna be really, really thick. Effectively, that changed my design. Not a lot, it didn't change any of the distances from here to here, but because I designed this to accept the Himes like this all the way around, it's not wide enough for the uniballs. And the reason that I messed that up is when I ordered the uniballs, originally I just measured the width of the Himes and then I measured the width of the uniballs and they're the same width. So I actually, in my brain, I just thought, oh, that's awesome, it's not gonna be a problem, I don't have to change the design, bibbidi bobbidi boo Well, lo and behold, I order up the parts, which was $217, so it's actually a little bit over $100 per spindle, so they're not like crazy expensive, but they're not dirt cheap. Anyways, once those showed up and I started putting pieces in place, I realized that what I needed to allow for was the cup of the uniball, not just the uniball. So these gaps went from being one inch wide to having to be about an inch and a half wide, and that changed a couple of things on the spindle. I'll show you what it, what it messed up. You can see I had to move the tab out to here. Originally, the tab would have come right into here, but I had to move it out, and this piece was tapered in for one inch, not an inch and a half. So it causes a gap right there, which, you know, is going to make this a little bit weaker, which, you know, kind of sucks, but what are you going to do? That's garage life. However, if you guys download these and make them or have them cut or what have you, you don't have to worry about that because I've already widened this out to an inch and a half instead of an inch. So if you're gonna make these with uniballs, you're already good to go. You can still make them with Himes if you want. Um, you can just move this tab in to an inch and then you could cut some of this out if you want or you could just leave it, it doesn't matter. So the new design will work with Himes or uniballs, but this one unfortunately, I modified it to work with uniballs, but this will probably not be my end game spindle because I'll want one that's got all the metal in all the areas for ultimate strength, obviously. But either way, it's not gonna stop my progress at this point. I'm not gonna replace it right away because I just spent $217 for these and I don't wanna just throw them in the garbage. So I'm just gonna keep moving forward with these, but at one point, you'll probably see me order a new pair of these and remake them. The DXF files do not allow for the thickness of the metal. They're kind of uh, designed off of paper. So when you get these and when you assemble them, you're going to have to trim a little bit off the edges. You know, you might have to trim an eighth inch off of leading edges of some pieces. It's no big deal. I had to do it on this one. I'm just telling you guys so that your expectations aren't that if you order these pieces, they all, you know, interlock and go right together. They fit together really, really well, but you will have to 
bevel a couple of corners and make some edits. So that's it for this video, guys. I know it's a lot of talking. I try to keep the videos short. I got a lot of information to jam in there. I'm trying to uh, give you guys as much information as I can without getting ridiculous. Remember that I will have the files in my shared folder in the description. So if you wanna, if you wanna just make a cardboard template for fun, you can do that. If you wanna send the DXF files somewhere to get them laser cut, you can do that. Or if you wanna just print out the bitmaps and make it yourself, you can do that too. If you wanna wait till I've got the whole thing designed first, you maybe might wanna do that, but I, I don't know. It's probably, the spindle's probably not gonna change at this point. But either way, uh, thanks for watching the video, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope it's helping you guys with whatever you're working on, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.